Okay, so I've been home for a while. Obviously, we all have been. I'm on the end of week six, Saturday of week six, so almost week seven of not working. Um, as you guys know, I've been making like uh, fabric flowers for some mixed media projects. Um, I'm still waiting for some stuff to come in and ordered. I ordered some fabrics and different things, but about a year ago, we were cleaning out my great grandmother's house and maybe, yeah, about a year ago. And, uh, my mom was like, I like this frame, but the picture and it's creepy to me. I mean, it's a beautiful picture. Don't get me wrong, but I have no clue who this girl is. My mom has no clue who this girl is. It's just something my great, great grandmother had in the attic. Um, it has no sentimental value to me. If she was still alive, maybe I could ask her like, Hey, who is this is it important. But either way, I'm going to use this frame that my mom wanted me to do something with. So I'm going to try to make something from this. I have no clue. What. I mean, first things first, I got to clean the heck out of this thing. Because there's like, I mean, it was in her attic where like she hadn't gotten stuff out of her attic in decades. You know, like some of this stuff was old, old, old in there. I mean, a lot of this actual dirt is underneath here in the glass. I don't even think I'm going to use the glass um, at all. I think, yeah, there's even a, a bug under there. Well, that's like a fruit fly type bug under the glass. I think I'm just going to use the frame and, but I got to get it cleaned off and then I got to prime it with some gesso. And I think I'll do white this time. I tend to go black for some reason. But I think we'll go white this time because I'm thinking more vintage -y, you know, shabby chic kind of thought and process in my mind. I don't know. I got some vintage -y flowers coming. I got some lace so I can make some more flowers. I've been making flowers out of burlap and cheesecloth. And um, so far, what was the other fabric? Organza. I have some silk coming so I can make some flowers. Um, I don't know. I'm just playing around with stuff, trying to keep myself busy and craft and why not? Um, the other thing is, I don't know if there's any other pictures behind here or if this is the only one. I got to take this off. So let's see if I can find something close by. I mean, you never know. I don't know. Maybe it'll be signed in here and I'll figure out what the hell it is or who it is. But there's no signature on the from where I can see in the photo, there's no like painter signature or anything. So this is an old frame. I mean, these little nails are, I'm just kind of bending them up and hopefully later I can bend it back down. I don't think I'm going to keep the glass in it at all either. Um, I believe I'll take the glass out and just use this as my, ooh, that's a cool, Look at this. Headquarters, Pearl, Water J, Water J and Front Streets, Brooklyn, New York. List of branch stores. Ooh, I wonder how old this is. Look at this. There's no date on this. Like, <laughs> Honestly, that's the back of this. I, under, I wonder if she just, someone just cut it out. Because they liked it. Because this isn't even evenly cut. Like, I want to honestly wonder if they just cut this out of something, like a poster. Almost like what we would do with posters as kids. I wonder if she framed it. Spices, baking powder, like what the... It literally looks like an advertisement. Or something. I have no freaking clue. That's the weirdest thing. Okay, so you have a girl that you don't even know. And then hanging in your... No, it wasn't hanging. I mean, maybe at one time it was, but not when we saw it. Okay. I need to somehow get this glass out of here without smashing it. It's getting caught on the little nails. i to get one of these nails out of here. Or all of them because I can really just glue stuff in here. This is a big piece. This is, there we go. I don't really even think 
think I need these nails. Oops. Not that I know what the hell I'll do with this big piece of glass either. I know what I'm going to do with it. That's so weird. She just thought, must have thought it was pretty. Look how dirty that thing is. Cross. Um, I have a box of glass stuff. From when I was doing mosaics. I have a box of glass. Okay. So now we got to get this primed. And I think, and that will help this old wood from peeling too. I mean, you could leave it wood if you want to. You can use a plastic dollar store frame, honestly. You don't need to use something fancy. And this is something that honestly probably would have went in the dump. Because her children had already gone through the house. My mom's the granddaughter, all the grandkids. And this was literally set to go in trash. Mom's like, well, you should really keep the frame. After I have a car full of shit stuff. Some of it good, but then some of it like, Mom, what the hell am I going to do with a frame like this? I don't know. And it's been sitting in my room for over a year now. Okay. Let's get some gesso. Now I'm going to use this uh, Finnabar heavy gesso. Not the greatest gesso. I still prefer the... Sorry, my washer is going. I still prefer the Bob Ross. I feel like I get uh, a better coat in one coat with the Bob Ross gesso. But it is usually more expensive. So, I don't know. Do some checking around wherever you buy art supplies. Um, I did, if you're interested in mixed media or playing around with crafting, I did, um, on, on my Amazon Ambassador, put some of my craft supplies I've bought in for mixed media. I mean, it's fun. You can honestly use whatever you want. You can you make stuff out of clay. You can use metal stuff old junk stuff from stores like uh, Goodwill and stuff like that. All kinds of, you know, glass, beads, buttons. It's fun. You start looking at stuff in a new way. Old scraps of paper and fabric. You can make your own paper by dyeing it with like tea and coffee. It doesn't have to be expensive stuff. Especially if you're just playing around, just use the craft stuff you already have. I think if you guys like to watch people craft, and I know a lot of you do, and I do as well, um, go check out Marima, Marima Small Art on YouTube. Um, M-E-R-I-M-A, I believe. She does a lot of mixed media, and she's quite similar to me in the way she does the whole videos. They're longer videos. She explains everything. You hear her thought process. You watch her change throughout the process. And I know a lot of you guys like that. And I prefer that. Um, Cause then it helps you, it helps me become a better creator because I kind of see how other people work through and get through the process. And then I kind of do the same thing and I'm like, oh, okay, Yep, no, that doesn't look good. That looks good. You hear me do it in my videos all the time. Now, some people do not like that. Some people just want to see the technique. I don't give a shit what you're saying. Other people like to watch people craft, and that's how I make my videos because that's what I like. I like to watch people do the whole craft process because I enjoy it. I would rather watch someone craft than watch a stupid TV show. So, you know, and a lot of times... Marima is one of my favorites. Um, I don't like the videos with music because music is, it's usually techno or like ding, 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 ding. And it, I watch it before bed and it like, wake. <laughs> you like that? My music noise. It like wakes me up. All of a sudden the music's quiet and then it gets really loud and then it gets quiet and then it gets, and it, I want something relaxing. And, and like a lot of you have said, listening to my voice is very relaxing. I like that as well. And she puts me to sleep. She, um, she lives in Ireland, but I believe she's from Poland and she's got a cool accent. So check her out. She is awesome. And she has a lot of videos for begin beginners where she 
teaches you how to use like toilet paper rolls and, you know, basic because everybody's like, oh, I need exactly what you have to make things. And I think she is like, I am. You don't need what I have. Take it and use it as inspiration, I, whether I'm doing clay or whatever. And she says the same thing. Like people feel like they need exactly what you have. You don't. I mean, yeah, if you see a product and you're like, oh, I would use that for this, this and this. OK, well, go ahead and buy yourself a product. No one's telling you you can't, but you don't need it. It's just kind of the thought behind it. Use what you got. So anyway, she she is great. I love watching her. Okay, so I'm going to continue painting this white. And I'll probably do two coats and the back and then all the side edges as well. Okay. So let me show you what I have going on. This is two coats. And either the wood's really soaking up the paint or some kind of old varnish is leaching out because it's when the white gets put on, it looks really white. Uh, I don't really have enough white, but then it starts to turn this off white tone. So I'm going to let it dry naturally, not with my heat gun. And um, then I'm going to try a third coat. If I can't get it white, like brand new white, then we'll go with this kind of worn paint kind of look and we'll probably enhance it some more with even fun colors we could go with um like turquoises and stuff and really dry brush it i was hoping to get this really plain white and then put cardboard back here and kind of work in here um and maybe a little bit on the edge with flowers and stuff but um the side might get more detailed than i had planned so i don't know let me let it finish drying and then i'll apply a third coat i haven't done anything to the back yet so we'll see what how it turns out and if i can get it solid white i don't know we'll see i mean it doesn't look bad now even in this dingy kind of like i said like shabby chic mode this actually would go fairly well so, and I don't really have anything in mind on the inside. Like I said, I'm going to use some papers, maybe some metal embellishments, maybe some different laces, string, different things. Um, and we'll see if we can come up with something pretty to give my mom. Okay, so I have the back has two coats and the front has three. It is still looking kind of yellowy, you know, compared to like white. So I think we're going to go... With doing something to this now i have from finnabar um and there's other brands but this is the white crackle texture paste and it crackles after a few hours so i'm going to apply some of this this is just a dollar store spatula and i don't know if i want to use a thin coat or a thick coat because the crackle looks different but i may cover this whole thing um so i don't know and you can paint it afterwards you know you can color it i don't know what we're doing i'm just crafting and i did put the uh primas or i don't know if it was prima or finnabar their um silicone spatula which is a lot smaller than this and would work well i just don't think i have it down here with me i think it's up by the sink um that works really well to apply stuff like this that little spatula so I may leave some of it thicker, some of it thinner, because you'll get bigger and smaller crackle depending how thick or thin it is. You know, but leave it spotty. We may pour some inks or some thinned um, acrylic on it later. I know you can see my desk is kind of a mess because I'm way zoomed out. I have like my hot glue gun here. <laughs> My notebook and all my kind of stuff on the side. I'm going to not put it on the flowers or the vines or whatever. I mean, you could. You can apply this pretty much um, to whatever you want. Fabric, plastic, chipboard, metal, wood. Um, it doesn't crackle very well if you use your heat gun to set it faster so this is going to go till tomorrow this is i started all this on the same day it's uh 9 21 i probably started this video like two hours ago i've been watching planet of the apes not planet of the apes i've been watching war the last one i don't know what it is so i've been letting it dry the coats of white dry and then 
watching the movie and then doing another coat. Fingerprints in there, though. So this will crackle on its own. Um, it's a one-step process over the next 24 hours. I'll just let it sit overnight type thing. And we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. And the thinner spots, if it doesn't crackle really well, it'll still give it nice texture. This might look cool under some paint, you know. If I decide to go with paint, or if I decide to go with either really thin acrylics or um, the sprays to let it kind of go down in to the actual settle down into the crackle. Like if you pour it up here, it'll go down into all the crackle. So I don't know. We'll see when we. I have some paper, like a scrapbooking paper coming in, because I don't really have any. Even though I could make some um, paper, if I had a bunch of white plain paper, you can dye it. Like I said, Marima has a video. I think I'm saying that right. Um, her name right. She has a video of how to show you how to eco dye with tea and coffee bags and stuff, or coffee and tea make some really pretty kind of vintagey old looking paper like you could take a junk book and dye it to make it look really old or if you just have some old books you know which I do have a I have a really really old Webster's dictionary from my grandmother I think one from the 50s and I don't want to use that kind of stuff she also I also got a couple copper bowls from this company out of Massachusetts copper craft I think it was called out of Massachusetts and I was going to use the bowl for a form in clay because I was like oh that looks really cool it, it's like a little round um planter and it was like a really good form that I could have used for clay to make a bowl out of um, cause I don't have any metal bowls or like glass bowls like that. It's literally like a half a circle. It doesn't, it's not like a bowl you would get cause the bowls don't always, they're not round round. And so, oh, there's a hard chunk in there somewhere. Right there. Leave it over there. And I was going to use hers for the form cause I really like the shape, but then I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to ruin it. It's like a really cool old copper product. And that company went out of business in like the 80s. They're not really expensive. I was looking on like Etsy and those little bowls are only going for like 20 or 30 bucks. But someday, you know, I'm only in my 30s. But maybe when I get to my 80s, you know, it could be a cool thing for my great grandchildren if I keep them. And they're still in the original packaging. They still have, um... Honestly, it looks like someone probably gave it to her. Oh, sorry, I'm out of the shot. Gave it to her as a gift and she never even opened them because it still has the like directions on how to use copper craft um, kind of products and in it. So I'm like, you know what? I probably shouldn't use that as a form for clay. So I'm going to save it. Could be something worth money later when my kids, well, I don't have kids and I don't think I'm going to have kids. I'll be 32 this year and I really don't think I want kids. I don't think Josh and I are going to have kids. So, well, when I die, my nieces and nephews <laughs> or great nieces and nephews, I don't know. So I guess I'm going kind of vertically with all these strokes up and down more. And some's going on really thick and some's going on thin.
I have smaller spatulas I could pull out, but I'll just use my fingers. Get your fingers in it. it feels cool. And you really, with crackle, you really don't know how it's going to look at the end. You have kind of have no idea until it does its thing. It's funny because all of my bathrobes and stuff I have paint all over. <laughs> they really do. Okay, let's see. Got a little slanted down here. So change this direction. These strokes. Okay, uh -oh, I can't zoom out far enough for you to see this whole thing, but it is what it is. Okay, so there it is. I'll have to figure something out when I'm actually doing something to it. Um, crackle paste. So we'll let this dry, and and you can do multiple layers if you don't like a spot. You can thick it, bulk it up some more on the same spot, but we'll I'll leave it exactly like this, and then uh. 24 hours or tomorrow morning tomorrow sometime i don't know if it's gonna be morning or not i'll come back and i'll show you what's happened to it or maybe tonight i mean if it starts to do it before i go to bed then as you guys know i go to bed pretty late so if it starts to do its thing before i go to bed i'll show you what that looks like I just want to make sure all the basic strokes are going in the right direction. Okay. Okay, so I want to use some different things that I have around that pretty much everybody has. So I just pulled this piece of cardboard off of a box, and I'm trying to pull this top layer off here so we get this really cool texture. We may use this. We may not. I don't really know. Uh, I'm just going to get it ready so that I'm prepped for it when some of my stuff comes in from Amazon. Because I just ordered some lace because um, I ran out of lace um, and things. I also have been playing with some molds that I have um, that I use with polymer clay. So <clears throat> I have different fondant molds different resin molds, different kinds of molds that I've bought over time. And some of them are from Prima. Some of them are from really off-brand companies. So I've been using uh, polymer clay. I've actually been mixing some of my clays. So I have Sculpey 3, which I don't really like because it's really brittle um, after it bakes. It has nothing to do with its softness because when I first started using polymer clay, I got used to how soft it was. It's really the fact that after it breaks, it, it, after it bakes, it snaps really easily. So that's what really kind of turned me off, almost turned me off from polymer clay until I realized, oh, I have a crap brand. Now I still have a bunch of the Sculpey 3. So what I've been doing is mixing it with some good clay. Now there is um, a couple of brand of clays that I don't use very often. Kato is one of them. I actually really like Kato, one, to work with it, and two, the way it finishes and buffs and polishes. But 
in Vermont, it's so cold here, even in winter or summer. I mean, 70, it's rare when we get a couple 90 degree days in a summer, but we're generally in the 70s. Um, you know, my basement is usually always in the 50s and or, or colder. Right now it's 59, so um, maybe 61, 62 on a 90 degree day. But so Kato is really hard for me to work with. The other one I got uh, this past summer, and now it's April, um, was Pardo. And it worked really well when I first had it, but it's really um, hard now. And Pardo is made out of um, beeswax, so I don't think, I don't believe, I'm not quite positive because I don't really use Pardo a lot. Um, I don't believe I can add the Sculpey Clay Softener, which is what I have for a softener. I don't have any other brands right now. So um, what I did was I mixed some of the Pardo, and all I had was translucent, with Sculpey 3, and it made it a lot softer. And um, it made the Pardo a lot softer. It made the Sculpey 3 a little firmer, but it'll give it the strength I want. And I don't need tons of strength on these things because I'm going to glue them to a flat surface, but I don't want someone to push on it and break it either. So some of the molds I made, I'll show you in two seconds. So I'm just peeling this off. That's all I'm going to do is try to peel this off so we get a cool texture and then I'll paint this white. Some of the molds, these are Prima molds here. Only um, It came in one rubber sheet and these are a few from that one. So these are Prima. And look, it even did crack a little bit. The Sculpey 3 sucks. It really does. So these are Prima molds. This other mold is a frame mold, and it's a really cheapo mold. I'll just grab one of each design that's on the mold. So these. So it's a frame mold, a little silicone mold, and it has like these frames. So it has this one. Made a few of these as this plain one here, little square one, and then this little heart one. And I just made them in pretty pale colors, but I can I can always uh, paint these. And that's the plan is to paint them. So I made a bunch of these and some, you know, different things that I can use as embellishments. That's what got me into polymer clay is making embellishments for my... Uh, mixed media projects because it's really it does get expensive but again try to use what you have popsicle sticks clothes pins buttons you know all that kind of stuff can make really awesome projects um, try to make a focal point you definitely want a focal point you know when I first made um, my first few projects and I wasn't really good at it just like everybody um, you know I would put like some here and then some way over here and some way over here and a couple over here, and then it looks really weird. Your eye has nowhere to go. So try to bring it all together and, you know, I don't know, just bring it more to a focal point. You can have some things off to the side, say, but you definitely want some kind of flow, whether it's a diagonal flow, a straight up and down flow, um, you know, like a circled flow. It doesn't matter. Just make a focal point. Okay. So I'm going to continue peeling this cardboard. And I'm going to paint it white so that it's ready. We may not use the whole thing. I may have to repaint it after if I tear it. Um, but I wanted to get it ready. Okay. The other thing is if you think you're going to use something in a project, get it white or black. Whatever your base color is going to be. Because when you're starting out, if things are like bright pink and purple and say something was blue. And, and you're like, I don't know if this is going to look good together. I have no clue. And get it all the same color. And it might help your eye focus a little better, okay? Mixed media is fun, so just have fun. So I got the cardboard peeled, most of it. And I'm just going to paint down in it. And again, use acrylic paint if that's all you have. I wanted to mention the other day with texture paste. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how you can make texture paste. I'm probably going to use um, some homemade fabric flowers. There's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to make flowers out of paper, out of foam, um, you know, like craft foam, like this stuff, Pomeranian or whatever. Um, 
fabric, burlap. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube how to do this kind of stuff. So, you know, try to use old tattered t-shirts to make flowers. Try to use, because when I watched a few videos on how to make, whether I typed in uh, fabric flowers, cloth flowers, t-shirt flowers, how to make burlap flowers, a lot of the petals look pretty similar. So just use whatever old jeans or t-shirts, you know, or old fabric you have laying around, you know, um, ribbon, whether it's Christmas or whatever. I tend to go, if I'm buying, I tend to go white because then I can dye it whatever color I want. Um, but a lot of this stuff you can make. So texture paste is one thing you can make at home that you don't need to buy. Um, that you could try at first to see if you even like doing this stuff to see if it's relaxing and fun for you. I just like doing it. I just think it's kind of fun and, and unique to be able to put a whole bunch of junk trinkets together and, you know, cause, um, like old jewelry. It doesn't have to be fancy jewelry, just, you know, old cheap jewelry, pieces of plastic, old kid toys, you know, Lincoln logs, just all kinds of crap, nuts, bolts, screws. Mixed media is so much fun because you take something and you repurpose it. And in this day and age, like even as far as recycling, like this would go in recycling or plastic things, you know, rather than like bubble wrap, you can use bubble wrap deflate it and put it on a background or leave it inflated. I don't know. Um, and make that as a, a textured background. So, you know, rather than throw it in the trash, you can recycle it and make it into something cute and new. And then when people from far away, it might look cool. But then when they get up close, go, is that a clothespin? Is that a bolt? <laughs> you know, and it's fun. I don't know. I just think it's fun. So again, you start looking at junk treasures in a way that it really opens your eyes. It, it's really fun to, I don't know, yard sales. You go to yard sales, get a bag of buttons and, you know, old beads and stuff. So there's that. And I wanted to show you the crackle. So here's the frame. And here is the crackle. So a thinner layer will give you a thinner crackle. A thicker layer will give you a thick crackle. These I went really thick. And some of these I could flick off if I wanted to. So I wouldn't go really, really thick. I'd stay like medium to thin. Okay. Because again, some of these I think I could peel off. So I'm going to paint all of this again white the whole thing white again one more time um yeah and also like i said i had i have lace coming i wanted to i'm thinking i'm going to put a whole big piece of lace down in here but i ordered lace is really expensive i found like even lace trim and stuff tablecloths you can get a big ass tablecloth of lace for like 10 bucks so on amazon i'm looking up lace tablecloths so that's what i'm doing 